If someone were to ask you what the most impressive video game ever made was, not the best mind you, just the most impressive, what do you think you would say? I imagine some of you would say Crisis, for its graphics that still make computers today work up a sweat, despite being over 12 years old. Others would probably say Ocarina of Time, for nailing Zelda's transition into 3D, being what many still consider to this day to be the greatest game of all time. Does No Man's Sky having 18 quintillion planets to explore make it impressive? Or the fact they actually managed to turn the game around and make it into something people actually want to play? What I'm trying to say is, there is no right or wrong answer to this question because impressive is a subjective term, and what impresses one person is likely to be sleep-inducing to another. I think the audience retention of my videos is proof enough of that. And because impressive is a subjective term, it means that none of you are allowed to call me an idiot when I say that the most impressive video game of all time is actually Big Mother Truckers for the Game Boy Advance. Now, some of you are probably going to accuse me of clickbait, but can you really blame me? Do you think that Big Mother Trucker's incredible GBA port would bring in any views? The view counter would have probably gone in the negatives. So bear with me in this episode of Port Patrol, the show where we look at weird and interesting ports and spin-offs of video games, as I try to make a case as for why Big Mother Truckers on the GBA is so impressive. Big Mother Truckers, or Big Mother Lorry Drivers as it's known in the UK release, don't look that up, was a 2002 GameCube, PS2 and Xbox game developed by a British developer whose name I am not even going to attempt to butcher. They went on to make Ride to Hell Retribution, so I think that's really all you need to know about them. It is also a game that I am going to completely gloss over for now, because honestly, who cares? I just want to talk about the Game Boy one. Developed by Port Patrol veterans Raylight Games, the absolute gods among men responsible for smashing drive on the Game Boy Advance, as well as that totally sick Resident Evil 2 GBA tech demo, and of course, how could I forget their crowning achievement, My Little Baby. I made that joke last time, but it is too funny to pass up. How? The GBA version of the game is the massive elephant in the room now that I'm showing it on screen, because I cannot possibly talk about anything else until I address what you're actually looking at. Just so we're on the same page here, you're looking at a game that is open world with a 3D rendered explorable map, with six different cities to explore, complete with fully 3D traffic, with some bike chases and police pursuits thrown in there to spice things up, all running on a Game Boy Advance. I could honestly just end this video now, because 90% of what makes this game so impressive is laid out on screen to you right now. So if you aren't impressed already, then you might as well just leave that dislike now and go about your day. But for the three of you who are left, Let's delve a little bit deeper into what this game actually is, and why its weirdness and uniqueness doesn't just stop with the graphics. Now from the name Big Mother Truckers, you are probably imagining a wacky arcade style racing game kind of like Burnout, with an emphasis on speed and destruction and overall silliness. And although there is a bit of arcadiness to the game, it has more in common with American Truck Simulator than Excite Truck, if you catch my drift. So although races play a small part in the game, like a very minuscule role, in all honesty. The main focus of the game is about buying and selling goods. Milk, coal, girders, 
forklifts and hogs, buy low in one city where it's in surplus, and sell it in another where it's in demand. Use your profits to repair and refuel, swap out trailers, upgrade your rig, and then buy more product. Needless to say, this wasn't the type of game I expected from a game called Big Mother Truckers, let alone Big Mother Truckers on the GBA. But here we are. This is somehow real. <laughs> The end goal of the game is to have the most money out of your siblings by the end of 60 days to take over your mother's lorry delivery business. The Big Mother, which the game is named after, and she, uh, she really lives up to that name. In every town, there is usually some form of very crusty-looking, big-breasted woman working at the bar, and I guess being extremely knowledgeable about the price of one particular item at a city they don't even live in is part of the job description, because it's at these bars where you'll get tips on where you can go next. I kinda like how every bar has its own unique feel that matches the town. The Greenback Casino is what more forgiving people would call Arabian themed, but I think others would just call Casino- <laughs> I meant to put racist there. <laughs> Why did I just put Casino again? <laughs> I think others would call racist, um, I mean, you know, I guess others would call it a casino too, but... <laughs> and Skeeter's Creek honestly gives me tetanus just looking at it. Why not spend some time at the bar gambling your money away on the slot machines? Or you can even take out a loan with the banker who also just happens to be here at this bar. I feel like the effort put into making these places feel more unique would come across better in the console game, because here, uh, the characters are pretty dry. I mean, what do you expect? They are literally just JPEGs. Very badly compressed ones at that, but with no personality or flavour text to help them stand out. Which is a shame, because their designs are full of character. Or, at the very least, full of Botox. In any case, you won't be spending much time here. You'll normally hit up the bar to find out what's selling well and where, then you'll go to the shop to buy it, forget what it was you were meant to be buying, then you'll go back to the bar to find out again, then you'll go back to the shop and realise you have the wrong trailer type, so then you'll go to the garage to swap out your trailer, then you'll go back to the shop, finally buy as much of that item as you can, and then head out onto the open road. It sounds like it would come together to make a satisfying gameplay loop. And although it works well, I do feel like it misses out on a lot of opportunities to stop the game from becoming stale. I mean, don't get me wrong, driving the lorry is pretty fun. It takes a bit of getting used to, I will admit, because it doesn't control anything like a lorry, and trust me, my 50 hours in Euro Truck Simulator make me an expert in the subject matter. Is it annoying anyone else that all these games have truck in the title, and I still insist on calling it a lorry? I, I kind of realised just now how annoying that is. Honking your horn to comedically slide traffic out of the way is pretty funny, and there are things to do to break up the monotony. However, what the game does isn't enough to offset the fact that it wants you to make 60 deliveries in a map with only 5 destinations, meaning at minimum you're still going to be taking each unique route 12 times before the game is finished. Which is bad enough on its own, but the biggest problem by far that this game has is that progression is stagnant. What I mean by that is there is no motivating factor for you to get better at the game, and every time I think of a way to improve it, I realise that the game does already do what I was thinking of, it just doesn't do it very well. Obviously, your reward for your journey is defined by the cargo you are carrying, and what you can sell it for, but I feel like some extra reward for a speedy delivery would encourage the player to drive with a bit more… you know… Pizzazz. 
Think like Crazy Taxi. But then it kind of already has this in the form of races, where at the start of a journey you make a bet with a terrifying looking man or woman, Big Mother Truckers does not discriminate, that you can get to your destination before them. That sounds like the perfect motivator, but here I am, 10 seconds into my delivery, and I've already overtaken them. Never to be seen again, unless I mess up in some cataclysmic fashion. This is literally day one, the very start of the game, and because the challenger is already this easy to beat in a race, it pretty much makes all but one of the upgrades you can get completely redundant. Like what, I'm gonna spend half a million dollars to upgrade my engine so I can overtake them in 9 seconds as opposed to 10? And look how many upgrades the brakes have. Like, holy crap, they work just fine already. The game also doesn't really punish you for anything. Obviously, you can damage your lorry, but the costs for repairs is often minuscule compared to the profits you can make, and you don't take that much damage in the first place. There's no need to dodge and weave between traffic, something that would actually make the game kind of fun. You know, avoiding traffic as you race, kind of kind of like another game I mentioned earlier. But not only are you not punished for crashing into traffic, you're actually rewarded for it. Bikers and police cars are the only two types of vehicle you're actually punished for driving into, but I think slightly inconvenienced would be a more accurate term to say. All the bikers do is drive up alongside you and shoot your lorry, uh, but the damage caused by this is like nothing. And the police cars trying to stop your lorry are akin to a fat, overweight Spaniard trying to face down a raging bull. I felt like the police had the potential to be a really good way of punishing the player. Perhaps if they managed to pull you over, they would throw you in jail, meaning you miss out on that day's profits. Uh, but if they do manage to stop you, uh, and by that I mean if you stop yourself and let them pull you over, uh, all you get is a tiny fine, and you can just continue your journey. The only upgrades really worth buying are increasing your max carry load and your fuel tank, but even then, they are so ridiculously expensive, I'm not even sure if you would be able to make your money back in the span of a game. So, for the most part, I found myself just keeping my lorry default, stockpiling money in order to get a lead over the siblings, and that kinda got boring after a while, if I'm being honest. And this is coming from someone who actually finds a weird, strange pleasure in playing Euro Truck Simulator. That game has a nice sense of progression, with lots of different rewards a player can work towards, and the fact there are more than five cities to go to helps a lot too, obviously. And I realise that comparing a GBA game from 2005 to a PC release that is still getting DLC is completely unfair, but I, I mean, at the same time, I cannot think of any other game to compare this to. At the very least, like I said, it could have benefited from a speed reward thing, kinda like Crazy Taxi. The closest it gets to this is you get more money depending on how fast you park up the truck when you arrive, uh, which is always disastrous because the FPS tanks to like 4 whenever you get close to a city, so it, it never goes well for me. I think what it really needs is that concept, but spread to last the entire journey, so the faster you complete it, the more money you receive, rather than just winning or losing a race. Or hell, just make the races actually challenging for god's sake. I don't know, I'm not I'm not an expert of game design, I ain't no snowman gaming. I'm, j I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> and that's kind of Big Mother Truckers in a nutshell, really. Unfortunately, it is one of those games that's more interesting to gawk at in a YouTube video than it is to play. So you're welcome. It is impossible to deny that it is a technical feat, a beautiful showcase of what the GBA can do graphically. But gameplay-wise, while there is something novel about driving a lorry around like this, you know, it's, it's fun for like five days not 60 of them. But we're not quite done with this game yet, because not only do we still have the original game to talk about, but the DS port that was also handled by Raylight Games. Trust me, it only gets more impressive from here. 
Big Mother Truckers on the DS is identical to the GBA version in just about every single way. The only difference being is that you have an extra screen, and it looks a little bit nicer. It has the exact same map layout, the exact same lorries to choose from, the same amount of goods to deliver and upgrades to upgrade, and I think it's because of how identical they are that the true impressiveness of the GBA version really shines through. I mean, I cannot think of a single other case like this, where you can do such a direct side-by-side -side comparison between the 3D graphics of a GBA game and a DS game, because they are literally identical, even down to the engine that they use. I mean, I swear there are like 2D, DS, and GBA ports that look more different than this, so I'm honestly in awe at what a great job they did of converting the DS game they made into a playable form for the GBA. Or hey, maybe they made it the other way around, who knows? The DS game is kind of a mixed bag though, in terms of improvements. The biggest improvement by far is the frame rate, which in the original would often turn into a slideshow the moment you came close to any of the cities, but now is, well, you can actually measure it in frames per second as opposed to frames per millennia, and the game is actually challenging now. I think what happened with the Game Boy version is they saw the frame rates and were like, well, we can't expect anyone to be precise or good at the game like this, and thus made it super forgiving. It's harder to dodge traffic, so make it deal less damage when you hit it. Of course, whoever was programming the game misinterpreted less damage as none, but thankfully that isn't the case here. I actually livestreamed myself playing this game straight after the GBA version, and look at how much damage I picked up on my very first journey, because I was still playing it how I was the GBA game. Pretty much for that reason alone, the DS game is far better, uh, because it actually forces you to have a brain cell or two engaged to play it. Uh, you know, considering how powerful the DS is in comparison to the GBA, it's actually pretty amazing that those are the only real meaningful upgrades I can think of. The DS version of Big Mother Truckers is better than the GBA one, though ironically, I find it a lot less interesting as a result. It's lost its novelty factor, which is the only real reason I played it in the first place, and as a result, I played this game way, way less than the other one. It might be the better game of the two, but being the better game kind of made it worse. A statement that would sound absolutely stupid anywhere else but this channel, and even here it still sounds absurd. God, I'm always so negative on this show, aren't I? Well, I guess we can end this on a positive note then, because we still have the original game to talk about, and thankfully, it's pretty good. The original Big Mother Truckers, then. I've put this off for long enough, and... Well, you probably saw this one coming, but it's pretty much identical to the DS and GBA versions. Same maps, same lorries, yada yada yada, you know the drill at this point. By far the best version of the game, developer Eugenix's speciality of having produced literally nothing but racing games their entire existence really shines through, with lorry physics being way, way more realistic than I ever thought they would be. If the disconnect between art style and gameplay wasn't already vast enough on the handheld releases, it's like the Grand Canyon here. You have these weird, wonderful, and wacky characters where nothing takes itself too seriously, and then you have super realistic lorry driving, with independent trailer physics, a really nicely defined first person mode, damage models on all the traffic, and stopping distances so realistic they have to be measured in miles, not inches. Of course, it's not a perfect game, the comedy, which is probably a strong word to use for it, and that says a lot coming from me, is very, very awkward. Again, that says a lot coming from me. Oh, 
Hi, I'm Suki. I'm Earl. Remember that name, because you're going to be shouting it all night. <laughs> shouting it all night, get it? You see, I I'm implying that... It... I know. You want a drink? I'm having one. Or five. There's even this subplot about an evil lorry driver who's hinted at throughout the game. Though, uh, I didn't get far enough to see what happens with that. So I, I probably shouldn't have bothered bringing that up. Unfortunately, one thing that playing this game has done is made me realise how much more stuff the GBA and DS versions messed up. The complaints I had about the lack of danger while slamming through traffic, the ease of winning races, the pointless upgrades. None of that really applies here. Immediately I realised how much more difficult this game was, when the rivals I was racing against were not only able to keep up with me, but also won on many occasions. I mean look, it, it's like an actual, like, real race. With stakes, and it's exciting, it's fun. Not just driving past them at the start of the journey and never seeing them again. It means I actually have a real incentive to upgrade my lorry, because what you start with here is way, way worse than it was in the portable ones. And honestly, I found myself enjoying the game a lot more than I thought I would. Obviously, it's nothing special, but it is unique, and it's pretty fun, and honestly, that's all it needs to be. Not every game has to be a masterpiece, pushing the envelope of what games can be, to be worth your time. Sometimes they can just be good, something fun to play, something that isn't necessarily going to be the top of anyone's favourite games list, but you can still get some decent enjoyment out of. Sometimes, they can just be good. And Big Mother Truckers is good. And that's all it really needs to be. Though, uh, it does beg the question why it got such incredible ports uh, literally two years after it already came out. I don't think the demand was really that high, but I'm glad they did it anyway. Anyway, I've been sat here for 45 minutes now recording this. My throat is almost dead, so how about we wrap this up? Big Mother Truckers. Holy crap, I am so tired of saying that name. While probably being a game not many people remember, did give us some of the most impressive handheld conversions I have ever seen. Obviously, they aren't as good as the original, but that doesn't make them bad games, far from it. While I have my gripes of them, I don't want to be too harsh, because they clearly had a lot of love and care put into them. Had any other developer been in charge of putting this game onto the Game Boy Advance, it would have been a lame, top-down racer, that had barely anything to do with the original, and it would have sucked, because every top-down racer does, and that's a fact. Or, at the very least, it would have been some sort of Mode 7 affair. But Raylight Games, in traditional Raylight Games fashion, went above and beyond what was expected of them, and honestly, probably above and beyond what these games really deserved, delivering an absolutely mind-blowing experience, which, just like I said at the start of the video, probably no one else but me finds mind-blowing. Sure, it might not play the best. In fact, in some cases, it's not even that fun to play at all. But in traditional Port Patrol fashion, I choose to ignore that fact. I love this game for what it does. And at the very least, I hope you can see where I'm coming from, and perhaps even agree with me when I say that Big Mother Truckers on the Game Boy Advance is one of the most impressive video games ever made.